So I really want a 3D printer that will allow me to print out my halfling army from last video, but I don't want another toy that's going to add more to my pile of toys that are unpainted and unused and generally just add to the clutter of our already cramped apartment. So I made a promise to myself and to my partner that I would paint my pile of shame before getting a 3D printer. And well, here it is, my pile of shame. Let's do this. Now, I don't want to just half-ass this and throw paint willy-nilly until I'm done. I want my minis painted up to my standard. I started this project on January 19th and I had just about two weeks to finish it to get it out on time. Uh, and clearly that didn't happen, it took me several extra days to get the video out. Uh, sorry patrons. But before I show you all of the finished models, because spoiler alert, I'm recording this after I've painted all of the models, we're gonna go into a breakdown of all the things that needed painting. But really quick before we do that, if this is the third video of mine that you're watching and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Subscribe! And join the fellowship! Become one! With us! That's what you want, right? Firstly, I'm going to paint up my Guild Ball team, the Farmers. Guild Ball is, sadly, a dead game, no longer getting support, and while you can get all the rules for free online, finding the actual models will be harder and harder over time. Regardless, I'm going to be painting it up in some nice fall colors, since their ball is a pumpkin I've already painted. Then I'm going to paint up the Sylvaneth that I have. I just haven't really felt the urge to paint them up until now, but practicing on their spindly little models will help me a lot with brush control. After that I'm going to tackle my horde of Lord of the Rings minis that I have, including the Riders of Rohan, Warriors from Minas Tirith, and some uruk and Goblins as well. Not the most exciting bunch, but it'll give me the opportunity to practice some batch painting. And lastly, after all of that, I've got my biggest challenge of all, my entire death army. It's filled with zombies, skeletons, and small fiddly things. This is the perfect candidate to learn different speed painting techniques, as even if they do look a bit dirty, they're kind of meant to be, so you can't really go wrong. There are a few models that I have that I'm saving for other videos for dioramas and such, so it's not every model that I own, but it's the vast majority, and I want to get this done as soon as possible, so well, let's get started, shall we? Following my plan that I listed out in the past, I started with my farmers. Enjoy this footage because it's all you'll see of it. I only got about two days worth of footage because I didn't really want to run my camera during that time because it had a loud shutter and a beep every time it took a picture every 30 seconds and I could drown that out with my headphones, but since my partner was home for several days that week, uh, due to both the freeze and being sick and for some days before that, uh, I really just didn't want to bother them with that noise over and over again, so I only got a couple days worth of footage. Anyways, I painted up my farmers with a fall color mixture of red, brown, orange, yellow, washed them down with a mix of Agrax Earthshade and Strong Tone, and then highlighted back up with a bone color, mostly by dry brushing. And honestly, I really do not like how they turned out. It's the normal formula that newer painters use, but genuinely I don't think it worked out very well on these models. Uh, and I just wanted to get back into the hang of painting, and honestly, I should have saved these for later, once I was more warmed up. They ended up looking like they were kind of pulled out of a sepia tone fairy tale book. And while that's a cool scheme in concept, I really wanted them to pop and look realistic, so I'm gonna have to probably strip them and repaint them eventually, but for now they will do. And I'll leave them as a testament that if you want something painted really well, you have to go above and beyond to paint them really well. Then I experimented with priming with rattle cans on my Sylvaneth. I really didn't want to have to base coat all of them, so my partner had a terracotta colored brown uh, that I used to base coat all of the minis. Then I washed them down with Strong Tone, then Agrax Earthshade, and then I highlighted up their face with like an orange to make it look like their faces were glowing. Then I picked out all the little details like leaves and skulls and fairies and owls and such, and while priming with a rattle can color won't work on every single mini, I think it works really well when a model is a majority of one color. Then I moved on to my Lord of the Rings minis, and I started with the little goblins. These ones are from the old Mines of Moria pack, and I still have the fellowship models from that pack, mostly intact, I had to do some sculpting for some missing bits, but I want to save those for a diorama that I'm planning, as well as a few other models that I have, they're also saved for a diorama. So it's not every single model in my collection, but all of them will be painted and you'll see them all on the channel, so these are the ones that I didn't have any specific plans for videos for. But for these little goblins, the grimy look works really well. I threw on some very basic colors, left a lot of black in there, 
darkened it down with strong tones, and didn't even highlight them because they really look like they're grimy and from, from Moria. I think it fits perfectly for these models. And this shows that how long it takes to paint something very highly depends on what model you're painting. If you've got an army that's going to be more grimy and dirty and has a lot more crevices, it's going to be way easier to paint. And just to prove that point, I'm going to show you how I painted my Urukai. Literally all I did with these was have a black primer coat, stipple on some red-brown, and then stipple on the armor areas only some silver metallic. And genuinely they look almost exactly like they would in the movie. If I'm ever going to get a Lord of the Rings army, it's going to be an Urukai orc army. Because they're so easy to paint up and they look nearly movie accurate. It literally took me less than 10 minutes to paint like two of these guys at once. And then, to prove my point even more more, I moved on to my Warriors of Minas Tirith. I tried to do a lot of similar techniques by stippling and uh, using just base coats, and genuinely I don't think they turned out nearly as well. These guys are supposed to be the clean, shiny, good guys, and honestly, if you don't paint them like that, they're not going to turn out super well. They look okay for what they are, but I'm not really a huge fan of how they turned out. And really, that just goes to show again what you're painting and how you're painting it have to mesh. And taking that lesson on board, I moved on to the models I was dreading the most, the Riders of Rohan. I painted a few of them up to a really high quality, uh, along with a miniature in a wheelchair for my mother for a diorama for Christmas, but I didn't want to paint the rest of them that I had because honestly, they were really hard to paint in the first place. It took a really long time to just base coat all the colors on there accurately, and then I had to go over with a very, very light wash and then bring back up some details. Uh, I did a little bit of highlighting here and there, uh, and then I just did the bases and I called it a day. I'm happy with how they turned out, but it took way longer than I would have wanted to spend on these models, and genuinely I spent an entire day just painting those ones. And then I decided to go a little bit above and beyond and print out a banner and then attach it to one of the spears. And with a little bit of painting to hide the white edges, I think it turned out really well. And even though it took the longest, I'm quite happy with the results. With that, I finished the Lord of the Rings minis that I was going to paint. Before I moved on to my biggest army, I used these three Chaos Warriors to test out some different uh, color schemes for future armies. And they all took three different levels of work. But I think in the end, they all turned out looking really cool and could be used on certain armies pretty easily. But that was just a palette cleanser before getting into the real meat of my miniatures, my death army. I started this army by learning how to airbrush. <laughs> that was absolutely a nightmare to learn. I was hunched over my tub, uh, spray painting in the only place that in the apartment I felt wouldn't get paint everywhere, dragging my minis from my desk to the bathroom floor, and using the compressor that caused a load of noise and probably disturbed my neighbors. And then just getting my airbrush to work properly, getting the air pressure correct, getting the spray consistency correct, and just trying to troubleshoot problems as I went along. It took almost two days just to prime 14 skeletons and 20 crypt ghouls. And even then, a lot of them didn't turn out super great. I had to go back over with a brush on some of them just to get a consistent skin tone. And Genuinely not having a dedicated space to airbrush in is detrimental when trying to actually airbrush. So while it's a very useful tool, I'm sure, once you know how to use it, if you don't have the space for it, I don't recommend getting one anytime soon. But I finally got those models base coated, luckily, and I decided to leave my zombies gray with the rattle can primer because, well, what other color would I paint zombies other than maybe a flesh tone or like a white? and I was not going to go through that airbrush trouble with another 60 zombies. So I just ended up keeping them gray and then painting over the details with the base coat and then moving on from there. Then I got to the task of painting up all of the details on all of the minis. 14 skeletons, 20 crypt ghouls, and 60 zombies. Their main color scheme was red and purple. So purple pants, red shirts, guts, blood, red banners, silver on the metallic parts, and then a full wash of strong tone, and then a little bit of highlighting here and there for some of them. And this genuinely took the longest amount of time out of all of them. Uh, it probably took me a good four days just to get through all of those minis, and I realized that I work rather slowly now. I used to be very quick at painting, but now I'm a lot more meticulous, and I really didn't have to be for this Death Army. I should have 
you know, sped up some of my some of my painting rather than trying to make sure I stayed inside the lines. Um, and while I am happy with my brush control on these, I genuinely think I could have been a little more sloppy and it would have been fine. Regardless, I think they turned out rather great. And I don't think we're going to be adding to this Death Army anytime soon. I'm very tired of painting red and purple on Death Units. Regardless, I'm pretty happy with how almost all of my minis turned out, and those farmers I'm going to come back to in its own dedicated video eventually. But for now, I'm happy with where everything is sitting, and I'm finally done. I finally have all of my toys painted, and I can get myself a 3D printer guilt-free. The final hurdle is going to be to pay for the equipment. And by my calculations, that's going to be expensive. But, well... I have a plan for that. Follow me. Anyways, that's all for today's sermon. Thank you so much for coming around and watching my video. Please be sure to thank the patrons that I already have, and if you'd like to join them and see my videos early, you can tie up to my Patreon in the link below. And as always, may the algorithm bless you and keep you. And in the name of the like, subscribe, and holy bell, amen. Jesus, baby, chill. You, why'd you get the zoomies so suddenly? You don't usually get the zoomies around noon. Yeah. I'm almost done, don't worry.